<clears throat> All right, guys. Tonight we are going to be making beef short rib. Now, granted, I don't have a uh, oven at the moment. My oven is out. It's been out for a little while now. Uh, so I'm going to do this on the stove, but I'm going to do it using my cast iron skillet, and I'm just going to put a lid on the cast iron skillet. But the first thing that we got to do is going to be, all right, well, let's go ahead. We're going to salt each one of these, a little bit of salt and pepper on each one. I'm using my pink Himalayan salt. I got to where I kind of like that. Plus, I have some good minerals in it for you. Alright. And we've got four nice, big, chunky, big short ribs here. I've never cooked this before. But we're going to try it today. Oh, my lord. Okay, now, if I don't knock the phone off again, <laughs> like I was saying, we're gonna, I've never cooked this before, but we're gonna try it today, and uh, see how, see how it goes. This wouldn't be the first time I've tried to cook something that I've never cooked before, and it turns out really good, and I've got a good feeling about this. I've researched a little bit, and um, I think I can do it, guys. I think I can do it. Alright. We've got that salt on there. Made us a nice good mess. <laughs> Alright, now I'm going to take in pepper. Put a little pepper. Put in some fresh ground pepper. We got some good ingredients going into this, including uh, red wine and uh some kind of little cute onions that start with a C. I'll include the name of those onions in the in the um, description for you guys. Alright, get some pepper. This is one of those things that's gonna make a nice gravy. So I wanna I'm gonna season every element of this. I'm going to pepper it pretty good with this nice fresh ground black pepper. Okay. Alright. Now, we're fixing to get down to business. I've got to make sure i got this phone stable. Alright. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to take some of this white truffle olive oil it's got a distinguished smell, but it's uh, really good with beef. And uh, you just got to look up and see what truffle goes good with, you know. This has got a very strong smell to it. It's Monini White Truffle Extra Virgin Olive Oil. Alright, so now we're going to put some olive oil in this cast iron skillet. Oh, smell the tr that truffle. Oh, shoot, that's hot. I ain't got a pot holder, did I? I'm going to double up some paper towel. I'm going to coat it really good. But just enough to where I can... I, all I'm doing right now is I'm fixing to sear the sides of this meat. I'm going to let that olive oil get good and hot. It's got to get good and hot because I want to... I don't want to cook it, I just want to sear the sides of it. Alright, so now what we're going to do, I'm going to take just a little bit of flour in my hand. I'm going to rub a little flour on each one. And as I do, I'm fixing to drop it in the oil. It's getting hot. I had it heated up before I put the before I put the oil in it. Ah. 
I hope this turns out good. Either way, it's nice, big, beautiful chunks of beef. Uh, it's going to taste good either way, but my goal is to get it as tender as possible. Make it, you know, fall off the bone. make room for that last one. Alright. We're just gonna steadily uh we're just gonna steadily flip these big short ribs. Oh, this smells uh, amazing. It smells great. Let's see if I can get y'all a closer look. Oh, yeah. Alright. See, my meat's in there sizzling at this point. I'm going to, I got four little, little tiny onions right here. I'm going to cut these. Well, I'll cut them in four. Right. These are soft, little sweet, uh, savory onions right here. I like them. It was something different to try this time. I've also got like a small clove of garlic chopped up. Uh, right here and I've got these are parsnips they're, they're a lot like carrots and they're uh, really good for you too and they taste a lot like carrots but it's uh, just a different color as all this so these are parsnips all right now it's time to turn the meat I'm gonna turn the flame up on this uh, on this meat I might have to turn it back over one time. I'm going to get a good sear. Alright, so we got that heat up now. Alright, so while that side's searing. I've got a piece of a bay leaf here. It's a big bay leaf, but it's uh, just a piece of one. This would be the equivalent of like two smaller bay leaves. We like to pick our own bay leaves because there are like a ton of bay leaf trees out at the farm. And um, we just, you know, don't see the point in buying them whenever you can take them and dehydrate them and then put them up. And I do have a dehydrator. And later on, probably during the summer, I'll uh, show you guys how to dehydrate some stuff. Dehydrated okra is so good. But it's got to be the smaller, tender pieces of okra whenever you dehydrate okra, you know. Alright, all right, so we're cutting up this parsnip. Doesn't matter if it gets a little bit mixed in with the onion and garlic over here, because it's all going in at the same time anyway.
All right, it's probably about time to split those short ribs once again. All right. Let's give them a nice split. Oh yeah, that's what we want. Oh, that, y'all, that smells so good. And it's going to render off some beef fat into the pan. Keep it. We're going to use it and saute these vegetables. Nothing like the smell of cooking beef. I'm going to give it just a, just a minute on each side. Obviously, it's not going to be done all the way through because we're just, we just want to sing that outside and get a nice little, it adds flavor, singeing the outside before you start the whole thing, you know. Hey, you guys want to know something funny? While that, uh, while that meat is, is getting a little thin, um, <clears throat> this is not wine. That's my e-cig y'all just saw. I used that to quit smoking. It actually worked pretty good. The views e-cig. Um, this right here is not wine. See how perfectly clear pink it is? I'm going to call it Barbie. <laughs> I could call it a few other things, but I don't know who my audience is exactly are, so we're just going to call this Barbie Pink. Now, what's in this is actually passion fruit rum, and uh, it's Crystal Light Tropical Blend, and it tastes like, like passion fruit, like super passion fruity, and it's like really good. That smells good too, almost perfume. It smells. It smells so much. All right. So well, it's probably time to get these turned over once again. So. Yeah. Oh yeah. Ooh. It's trying to pop on me because it's hot, but that's how you gotta have it. That's how you got to have it. Alright. Oh, full. Cool. Okay. Alright. As you can see, um, we're getting a nice crust on the outside. That's exactly what we want. Show y'all my table while this side, while that side's uh, cooking. <laughs> what do y'all think of my table? I needed something cheerful, so I got a 
I bought a little fake arrangement of flowers and put it together and got a cute tablecloth for three dollars at Ollie's I got this tablecloth and it's uh I think it's washable and um the tissue box was actually uh given to me I cleaned it up and put some tissues in it I got this Yankee candle for seven dollars at Ollie's and then I went to um Parker's and got the fake flowers <coughs> <coughs> Oddly enough, the candle was the most expensive thing on the table. Alright, well let's get back to the food, shall we? I believe it's probably time to turn it again. Yep, we gotta turn it again. start taking it off and putting it on this little paper towel over here off to the side Nice and brown. Here you can tell there's a little bit of rendering in there with that uh, olive oil I had put in there. Alright, so now what we're going to do, we're going to turn the heat down to medium. I had it on high to do that, to singe the outsides of that. And we're going to throw, start throwing our carrots in there. I'm just going to take the bay leaf and sit it on top of the meat for now because you don't really have to fry that. Uh, just, I'll show you when we put it in there. Ow, my grease got me a little bit. Now let's start throwing onion in there. Onion. Onion. Got my garlic in there. Give it a little stir. Oh wow, the smell of that is phenomenal. Alright. So now we're gonna cut these other two parsnips up. Y'all, if I said carrot at some point, <laughs> I'm sorry. Because it is basically tastes like a carrot, but it's a uh, parsnip, so that's what this is, parsnip. Parsnip in there. Alright, we're going to give it another stir. Oop, not 
yet. Had a little parchment try to escape. Not so bad. All right. I'm getting on cutting this other parsnip up. Chunky vegetable -y, um, broth to go with our um, meat. I say broth, gravy. By the time we get done, it'll be like a gravy. A red wine infused, chunky vegetable, meaty goodness kind of gravy. That'll go right by and on top of our mashed potatoes. And we'll have mashed potatoes and asparagus with this uh with this beef parsnips. I'm gonna cut the heat up just a tiny little bit. Alright now at this point <clears throat> I'm gonna put a little salt around some pink and lay and salt in here. Brown some black pepper. Alright, I'm gonna put it on. Yeah, there we go. Let's get a few bigger pieces of pepper in there. It'll cook and soften. Alright. Now you're looking at some flavor. Now. I'm going to add some, let's see, I don't want to add too much time, but enough to flavor it, okay, so I got a little cap full, I got one of these spice bottles, and I just used cap, probably about, I guess, two teaspoons of thyme. And I'm going to sprinkle it over them cooking vegetables. Alright. Now I've got um, herbs the province. And really, I would suggest you just use rosemary, but that's the only thing I have that has rosemary in it. So, and I only have a pinch of this left. Like, literally, just a pinch. So, I'm going to sprinkle this over that mixture to get that little bit of rosemary in there. Yeah, this, uh, the ingredients on this Herbs of Provence is thyme, which we already put in there, lavender, basil, which ain't gonna hurt that little bitty tiny bit, and marjoram, fennel seeds, which is not gonna hurt because I needed fennel anyway, uh, and rosemary, which I needed in there. So now that's empty. Give it a stir. Oh man, the smell now. I think Clayton's gonna really, really like this dish. This is right up his alley. Meaty, hearty. Just a, just a dang good supper. A feel good supper. Alright, so now I'm going to add uh, this little beef bouillon, I'm going to throw my little beef bouillon in there, try to crush it so it'll get mixed up when I pour this red wine in. Dissolve, I mean, I kind of crushed my beef bouillon with a fork. Luckily, it crushed and didn't ricochet on me. <laughs> the only one I got left. Probably wasn't a wise decision, but it worked. All right, now we got that beef bouillon in there. 
me wipe the camera off. So the camera might be getting a tiny little bit fogged up because of uh, the heat coming off of this. Alright. We're pouring that red wine into there. And guys, it doesn't have to be a fancy red wine. All I did was get one of those little bottles of Sutter Home. Uh, it's actually sweet red. Probably could have did Merlot too. Um, and I poured that red wine into this mixture. Now let's give it a stir. Wow. This smells fancy now. Alright. Okay. parsnips and our onion and garlic and thyme and rosemary and a little bit of fennel seed and uh, parsnip, onion, garlic, yeah, all the good stuff there and some wine, salt and pepper. All right, now let's not forget that bay leaf. All right, let's put that uh, bay leaf on in there and we'll just take and kind of kind of bury it there so it uh so it soaks up some of the some of the liquid and then puts off a slight flavor. Now it doesn't matter how much you cook that bay leaf. I'm gonna tell you right now, that's one ingredient in this dish that is just for flavor. You can't eat that bay leaf. I mean you probably could but I wouldn't advise it. That bay leaf um it's just uh it's just for flavor. You don't you don't eat it. I'd eat a lemon rind before I ate that. Just saying. Alright which people eat lemon rind all the time with lemon zest and stuff like that. But all right, now we're gonna pour some water in. I actually feel like I need a little more water, but when I put that heavy chunks of meat in, that water level is going to rise. So we're gonna put our meat in first and then check the water level. And how much water I put in was basically a 16 fluid ounce empty jar of Vlasic uh, pickles. So, <coughs> woo, this dang pollen, y'all. I tell you what, making me sneeze. Um, basically, uh, this is 16 ounces of water. So now we've got our water in there. <clears throat> oh my goodness. Just beef. I swear it smells so good. I just want to like eat it right now. But I know I can't. Golly. It's nice and... I want to show y'all something too. It's nice and mushy. You see the... You know the meat's still not done on the inside. It's still mushy. That's what we want. But it's crunchy on the outside. Listen. Come on, camera focus. Get that good shot in. Yeah. How it's crunchy. We seared that outside real good. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah. You hear that? I'll tell you what, just for the fans. I'm going to take just a little piece. And try it. Because beef is one of them things you can eat raw. If it ain't done on the inside. Just a little tiny. Oh my gosh, that is good, y'all. This is going to be phenomenal. Let's see. Oh yeah. You still see a little blood? See? That's how we want it. Crispy on the outside, but not done all the way through. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take... And we're going to put all of them in this <clears throat> nice cast iron skillet. There's two. <clears throat> There's three. These are nice big chunks of meat. That guy at the butcher shop was trying to convince me that this wouldn't feed um, a family of four, which were one less tonight. But, um... Check that out. That's that's a pretty good bit of meat on, on them. I think that would feed a family of four, just saying. 
But, um, it's looking good, y'all. It's starting to come up to a boil. See, what we're going to want to do is I'm going to find a lid. And uh, I guess I'll keep y'all on here and let y'all let y'all get a good look at it before I end the video for now. But um, I'm going to find a lid and then I'm going to turn this down on low and I'm going to let it simmer for about two hours. And um, we're going to have to check every now and then to check on the liquid. But don't uncover it a lot. Keep it covered. Keep it covered. About like rice, I guess. But keep it covered. Now, we, we got everything submerged in here. We are only going to open this one time halfway through to make sure that the liquid is still good and to flip them over. So I'm gonna find the lid real quick. <clears throat> Probably have to wash um wash the one from yesterday. And then I'm going to cover this really good and uh and just let it cook. That at this point what you would have done anyway is to put it in the oven, but like I said, my oven's out. If I have any real good friends that's willing to come take a look at my oven and try to fix it, be much appreciated, but um, we're probably going to have to get a new oven because I don't know how to fix it. And I don't think Clayton knows how to fix it either. So, while well, that's beautiful beef is bubbling away, let me get us a lid. Mama! What? No, you didn't. Put that back. This is the final step, guys. We're going to turn the heat down to just barely above low. Alright. Alright, yeah, that's good. Now, we're going to cover it. We got to keep it covered. And then that's it, guys. That's what we're going to do for the next probably two hours, maybe. We're just going to see how it goes because this is cooking it on the stove and we're in unfamiliar territory here. So I'm going to do my best at this. It is covered in cooking. So bear with me. All right, guys. Till next time. Stay tuned. I'm going to post a part two to this video also showing the final product once it is plated with the mashed potatoes and asparagus. All right, guys. Thanks for watching.